Yeah, I don't understand why he wanted her to stay there. What would she accomplish standing in front of the elevator? He was so surprised by June that he didn't even take the time to think about what awaited him on E-Deck. The elevator stopped, and the door slid open. Hmm. He stepped off onto the floor outside the elevator. Nothing seemed especially unusual. No fish going about their fishy business, <laughs> or jellyfish floating lazily through the water. What is fishy business? What does a fish businessman do? There was, however, a blowfish. Or at least something that looked very much like a blow like one. June's cheeks were puffed out in her mouth, a teeny intense frown. Mm. Oh, knock it off. It's just like I thought. This part hasn't flooded. Come on. Just look around. There's no water here. Oh, she thought it would be flooded, so she took a deep breath. Oh, June. Or Kane, that's her actual name. But as to avoid confusion. June looked around nervously, then... Ah! <sighs> exhaled. You're right. It's not flooded at all. See? But there's a whole lot of water. Yeah, right on top of us. What's going to happen if the ceiling breaks? Well, then water rushes in and we all die. Well, we wouldn't die. We would rush to the elevator as fast as possible, try to open it, stay in one area, get in the elevator, close the doors as soon as possible, then go up. Junpei thought about that for a moment. We'd probably die. Oh, oh no! D don't be so casual about something like that. At any rate, we should probably go back as soon as we can once we're done looking. Around down here. Lotus and Santa might already be back. Okay. Good idea. Junpei glanced around the room as they f uh, they'd found themselves in. At first, uh, the first thing he noticed was a set of thick iron bars. They ran the length of the room, separating the left elevator from the right one. Well, we can't go over there. Right. Then perhaps, in the corner of the room that housed the elevator, Junpei found an opening. He walked up into it, uh, up to it, and stuck his head around the corner. Door number six. A long, straight hallway stretched out in front of him. That door at the end of the hallway. There's something written on it. What? Oh, wait. It has to be three. I don't know why I did that. Uh... Nope. Our current combinations won't work, so... There we go. It would have to be me, June, and Clover. Door at the end of the hallway, there's something written on it. Yeah, let's go have a look. You can't see the big ass six on it from there. Junpei and June set off down the la nah, down the hallway at a brisk clip somewhere between a run and jog. Wait, but if there's a door down there at the bottom at three, and I'm guessing there's gonna be one in their room too, then how would they meet back up again? Unless after you go through that room, you would go back up on an elevator and meet back at where the thing... Maybe. Okay. Before long, they found themselves in front of the door. On it was a number written in bright red paint. And my laptop is dying, which is less than helpful. Where is the charger? Oh, don't tell me I have to get up and get it. I thought I put it right next to me. Oh, boy. Okay, it just fell off the bed, I, or I was able to grab it. On it, the number written in bright red paint, six. I knew it. This is a number door! Thank you, that we needed to hear that bit of dialogue. And indeed, there was a red bolted to the wall right next to the door. Of course, with only two people, there wasn't much they could do with it. 
All right, let's head back. Yes! Junpei and Jun turned and headed back to Sea Deck. On their way back, Jun noticed a map on the wall. As it turned out, it was a burnt map of the ship's interior for E Deck? Why is it burned? Huh? So you guys found door one? Oh. They'd met back with Santa and Lotus, who had explained what they'd found. Oh, wait, hang on. I forgot to include the fact that Snake might be with them, and they would explain that, probably. Nope. I'm trying to see if there's any way for Clover and Snake to be together. Oh well, I don't have time to look through all of it and they'll probably tell me what it is anyway. Apparently, there was another numbered door on A deck, just like the one on E deck, beyond the door that the Earth Key opened. According to Santa and Lotus, there was a 1 on the door. All told, they had discovered two doors. The 6 door and the 1 door. It's interesting that E deck wasn't flooded. Lotus was quiet for a moment, lost in thought. Well, we don't really know if all of E-Deck is safe. We only checked the area- oh wait, that's him. We only checked the area around the elevator. Even so, it's still very interesting. You said Six Door was there, right? Yes. And that means Zero planned all this out, even the sinking. That would have meant some pretty serious remodeling of the ship's interior. Pretty mind blowing when you think about it. Yeah. I wonder how long it took. I can't even imagine how must it, it how much it must have cost. Would have been a ton, that's for sure. Well that's that nah. well that does go along with what Ace was saying. The most reasonable explanation would be that this was done by some organization. With access to a whole lot of cash. Yes, it does make sense. That thought made them all go quiet for a moment. June bit her lip while Lotus sighed softly to herself, and Santa cracked a stiffened neck and stared off into the distance at nothing. So if we go with the theory it's an organization, odds are they're recording this entire experience that we're having here and posting it somewhere online for sickos to watch. Um, I don't think it's a very good idea to stay here. Jun looked up at Junpei with large, pleading eyes. Yeah, you're right. Ace and his team might be back already. Well, Jun, Junpei, I should be able to open door one. Huh? You guys are leaving me behind? 86519. 1 plus 9 is 10. 1 plus 0 is 1. Just kidding. Alright, let's go. Lotus's words were all the Im impetus they needed. Back to the large hospital room they went. Okay, so let's see what we got going on here. The moment they stepped inside, a tremendous voice echoed across the room. Hey! Where the hell did you guys go? It was Seven. Ace was right behind him and Clover was behind Ace although she seemed to be hanging back. It looked as though there was something strange about them. Seven had the look of a man who'd seen a ghost. Ace was just pale, and Clover looked as though she was only moments from passing out entirely. For a long moment, they simply stood there, looking at one another. Junpei looked around nervously, waiting for someone else to speak. No one did. He looked at Seven. What happened? The hell kind of question is that? Seven was trying very hard to be angry, but something had shaken him hard. His shoulders were trembling. His voice was strained. Snake was... Snake is... Seven couldn't finish. He just looked away. His face twisted by Jun... Uh, by... Junpei wasn't sure what. Instead, Ace spoke. He took a deep breath, closed his eyes, and spoke. Snake is... dead. He died just as the ninth man did. What? How? How could he have exploded? 
if he had gone through a room on his he would need two different bracelets on top of that and there aren't any what it was as if all the air had suddenly been sucked out of the room junpei felt his heartbeat quicken and he realized he was having trouble breathing he could feel a cold sweat beating on his forehead and neck june santa and lotus looked the way he felt all three were frozen in place their faces white oh my god that's not true is it we should make sure y yeah right we should they nodded to one another and headed for number three door wait not that way they stopped short and turned to look at seven he was pointing at the door with no number isn't that the door they left I stuck a screwdriver in there to keep the door from closing all the way. It's not locked, so you can go in that way. Where is... where is he? The shower room on the left side of the hallway. I put a broom in there too to keep the door open. He knew they would want to check? Well, that makes sense. We can get in without going through the number door, right? Yeah, that's right. Their new destination clear, Junpei and his companions headed for the door with no number. Once in the hallway, it was easy to spot the metal door on the left wall. It hadn't been opened when they had seen they'd been through before. But now, just as Seven had said, there was a broom sticking between the door and the frame keeping it open. They looked at it for a moment, then stepped inside. No, I don't need to do calculations. I thought about it. Now that 2 is out of the game, it's going to make it a little harder. But no, I don't I think we should still be fine. Ugh. It smells horrible. Lotus wrinkled her nose and covered her mouth in disgust. Even Santa pinched his nose shut. Yeah. This is pretty awful. I feel like I'm going to puke. It was just as bad as they said, perhaps worse. A hideous smell filled the air, so thick they could almost taste it. It was sour, and smelled of fish, feces, and burned meat. It worked its way through Junpei's nose and down his throat, to pound against the entrance of his stomach. He put his hands over his mouth, and struggled to keep what little his stomach in what little was in his stomach where it belonged. Looks like painted on the wall is LLR under the blood. They didn't have to wonder where the body was. There was blood everywhere. A few arms of splatter reached towards them as they walked through the door. All one had to do was follow the many radial arms to their source. The body itself was hidden behind a divider. June... You should stay here. But, please, just do me a favor, okay? Alright? He didn't give her a chance to say no. He put his hand on her shoulder as if to shove her to the ground like a tent pole turned. A tent pole? Oh, a tent pole turned. And walked toward the end of the divider. It felt like it took an eternity for him to get there. Santa and Lotus followed, timid and nervous as a pair of children. Eventually, they reached the divider. They looked at one another and nodded slowly. Junpei put his hands on the divider and peered around the corner. For a moment, he forgot to breathe. He felt his heart collapse in his chest like an empty cigarette carton, and time froze. He knew in that instant that he would take the image before him to the grave. What was left of the body sat in a sea of blood. Chunks of flesh torn from the body sat in the blood like tiny islands in a great red sea. A vast ragged hole had been torn in the torso, and what remained of his intestines spilled out like fresh spaghetti. Oh my god. I feel so bad for Clover. She saw her brother in the state. Smaller chunks of meat had splattered against the wall and became stuck there as they dried. 
globules of yellowish fat had left trails like tiny slugs as gravity pulled them down the wall, even as they dried to it. Just like Ace said. Santa's voice was strained. Junpei suspected he was holding down some vomit of his own. Just like the ninth man. The detonator in his bracelet set off the bomb in his gut. It looked as though the explosion had been quite powerful. His legs were both bent in an odd, unnatural way. His left arm had split open, exposing some painful white bone of his ulna. His bracelet lay next to him. It seemed to have hit the wall hard enough to shatter the display, which lay on the ground in pieces. Half of his head had simply collapsed. The blood coating almost made it look like raw pizza dough covered in tomato sauce. His clothes, too, were covered in blood. The burgundy tie, the white shirt, the jacket with yellow piping, and the gray slacks. They were all familiar to Junpei. No mistake about that. It's Snake. Lotus's voice was unnaturally deep and strained, and Junpei heard it catch in her throat. The squeak of tortured metal made Junpei's teeth curl. It sounded like the noise of a ghost would make. No matter how many times he heard it, he never got used to it. Every time it put him on edge. It didn't help there was a girl nearby who looked far more like a ghost than a living human should. It was Clover. She sat on the edge of the bed, her head drooping listlessly onto her chest. Her eyes were blank, a stare across the room at nothing. Her breath was slow and mechanical. Aside from the rise and fall of her chest, she didn't move. Junpei felt as if even a nudge might cause her to shatter into a thousand pieces. Snake was probably murdered. Chances are he was killed the same way the Ninth Man was. Seven lowered his voice in an effort to keep Clover from hearing what he had to say. There were four other people in the room with Junpei and Seven. Ace, Santa, June, and Lotus. Seven looked at each one of them in turn and continued. It's pretty straightforward. Not that hard to figure out how they did it. First, the killers got Snake to authenticate on the red and open door number three. Then they shoved him into it alone and waited nine seconds for the door to shut. Once that door shut, it was over for Snake, but he didn't give up. He probably knew it wouldn't do him any good, but he probably ran to the shower room looking for the dead. There was a small chance, but it wasn't like he had anything to lose. Unfortunately, it didn't work. The detonator only deactivated. The detonator only deactivated if everybody who authenticated when they went in to use the dead. And in that 81 seconds after he shoved in, that happened. I see. So that's what you meant by the killers, huh? You need at least three people to open one of the numbered doors, including Snake. But why would someone murder Snake? That's the thing I don't get. Who would possibly gain anything from this? Furthermore, who would be willing to murder him and why? We know Junpei and Jun probably aren't responsible, even though they weren't together at the... Actually, no, they were together at that point while they were looking around for the thing, right? Yeah. Okay, so it can't be them. Ace and Seven probably aren't responsible because... No, everyone is paled by this. So I don't understand. Well, that's not entirely true. I mean, they knew what happened. They could still be horrified by what it was. I don't think it was Ace because he was willing to sacrifice himself for everyone. Clover wouldn't do it because there's no way in hell she would kill her brother. Then that leaves Lotus, Santa, and Seven... But he's explaining this, so I don't think it's him either. I'll have to make a list to be 100% sure. 
wouldn't open for snake and a single killer. Exactly. That means we're looking at multiple perps here. Junpei crossed his arms and grunted. Well, just in case, I want to make sure. Let's say you're right. When do you think Snake was killed? When we all split up and looked for the parts for the red, I think. Right after that was when we noticed he was gone. And that means none of us have alibis. We're all off searching rooms we've been assigned, looking for those parts. Yeah, that means anybody could be a killer. Wait a minute! What are you talking about? June seems shocked. How can you say one of us is a killer so casually? Well, technically he's saying two of us is a killer, but... Well, not just one of us. If I'm right, then at least two of us are murderers. Why don't you calm down a bit, Seven? What are you going to gain by being so suspicious? That's what Zero wants you to know. What Zero wants? Exactly. This game was set up by Zero, wasn't it? Any game has a winner and a loser. Whoever makes it through door 9 is a winner, and those who don't are the losers. Zero is trying to make us fight against one another for that victory. Then you're saying Zero is trying to split us up by making us fight each other? Yes. That's why we can't let ourselves fall prey to suspicion. Okay. Another theory I have. Zero may have threatened two of the people to kill them right then and there on the spot if they didn't kill Snake. Just to plant these seeds of suspicion. We have to trust one another and form a strong bond of friendship. Otherwise, we'll end up ensnared by Zero's manipulations. Then, does that mean the one person, or the person who killed Snake? Yes, I'm almost certain. Yes, almost certainly Zero himself. If there's anyone we should doubt, it should be Zero. He masterminded this game and kidnapped all of us. And you know, it might be like Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories where Zero opens all doors. No question. And he pushed him in. He masterminded this game and kidnapped all of us. Doesn't it seem reasonable he would have killed Snake as well? Junpei hadn't really considered that. If Zero had killed Snake, then Zero was on the ship with them. Was Zero still on the ship with them? He could be, but there's a chance that he wasn't. We need more proof than that. Junpei wasn't sure. He wasn't sure. Hey, I'm just wondering about one thing. And what's that? How can you be so sure that Zero is on this ship? Lisa's eyebrows shot up. Really, Junpei? I confess I'm a little disappointed. Usually you're rather sharp. Isn't it obvious? Obvious? How so? This ship. Huh? Zero said this ship several times when he just. Oh yeah, that's right, he did! But that doesn't really, like, break too much ground. And he did say he was the captain, too. I really should have picked up on that. Alright. If he weren't here, he wouldn't say, this ship, would he? He'd be saying something like, that ship, or the ship. I don't know about that. He might say it just to throw us off. Oh. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Lisa's explanation made perfect sense. Junpei felt a little foolish he hadn't seen it himself. Still, he was left with a question, and was of no small importance. Zero's on the ship. Where is he? Suddenly, everyone went very quiet. The silence was cold and clammy and Junpei could feel it crawling across his back and around his throat. Again, he heard the ghosting moan. Sorry, the ghosting moaning noise. And moments later, a person who looked more like a ghost than a human appeared. It was Clover. She looked at the floor as she spoke. Her voice was a cold monotone. I think... I think Zero is... one of us. 
What? Every human body in the room froze. The only sound was the muffled rustling of breath. Eyes darted from face to face. One of those faces was the face of their jailer. But who? Junpei? Said. I suppose it is a possibility, but... Hmm... You know what? I think I'm going to end this episode here. The next one, we're going to answer this. See you guys then.